Hello guys, what's up? The code Tolik is here and welcome to my channel. In this video, we're gonna enable Xdebug extension for our XAMPP installation and debug our application using VS Code. First, we're gonna debug really simple application, but then I'm gonna show you a fully functional YouTube clone application written using MSC framework debugging using VS Code. We're gonna also see conditional breakpoints, where the breakpoint basically is only activated when some condition is satisfied. So it is gonna be a really interesting video. Definitely hit the like button, hit the subscribe and the bell buttons so that you don't miss anything and let's start. First, let's have a look at this simple project. I have index.php where I'm including person PHP, creating an instance of this person class, and then just printing the name. In the person PHP, I have two properties, constructor and getter. And I see output in the browser as well. Okay, let's enable Xdebug. For this, let's go to index.php and just print PHP info. And I'm gonna exit right here as well. Let's reload the browser and we see all PHP info. Let's copy everything and go to the following website, xdebug.org slash wizard. I'm gonna paste my copied output of PHP info right here and click this analyze button. This will analyze my PHP version and it will give me a recommended DLL version for xdebug to download. It also gives me instruction that I want to put this DLL file into see exam php exe folder and open and edit php ini file and write their zend extension so i'm going to download this dll file then i'm going to move this file into my exam installation php exe folder right here i already have php xdebug which has version 2.8.1.1 1. the new version we just downloaded has 2.9.5.1 so this is the latest version, so let's use the latest version. I'm gonna delete the old phpxdebug DLL file and rename my new one into phpxdebug. Then I can go one directory back and open php ini file. Scroll at the very bottom and write the following code there. Using the following code, I'm enabling xdebug I'm specifying auto start property that will automatically start debugging when I'm listening to the incoming requests. And I'm also specifying which DLL file to use for debugging. Make sure you give the correct DLL file name, the exact same name we have in PHP ext folder. We save PHP in a file and we need to restart Apache. Go to exam installation, open exam control, stop and start Apache. After this, we can already configure VS Code to listen the incoming requests using xdebug. First of all, let's remove this PHP info, we don't need it anymore. Then let's install PHP debug extension. Then we click run in the top menu and then add configuration and choose PHP. This will create a VS Code folder and launch JSON in my project. We basically don't need to touch this launch JSON anymore. It's the default configuration settings, which works fine. From this menu, we choose whether we just want to listen incoming connections using xdebug or debug the current file. I'm gonna debug the current index.php for now. You choose the launch currently open script. Then we need to create a breakpoint and then click the play button. The debugging has started. We see that debugger stops on line five. On the left side, we have some local variables, some super globals, some call stack, and so on. We can use all debugging buttons VS Code gives us. Step over, step into, step out, restart the debugger, or just continue or stop. Let's step into person constructor, step over a couple of times, and then we are index PHP again. If I want to finish the execution of this script, I just click the continue button. Okay, now I'm gonna choose listen for xdebug and click the play button and refresh the page in browser. Make sure you have the breakpoint. Now I'm debugging my application using browser. On the left side, I see that person is uninitialized variable. If I click step over button, then the person gets initialized and it has name and age. 
If I click continue, the script finishes execution and I see the output in the browser. Ok, let's start debugging again. And now I'm going to open debug console by clicking the terminal, new terminal and then debug console. Debug console is an excellent tool to execute the code while you are debugging. For example, if I step over on this and the person class is already created, I can call the person get name from this debug console, which gives me output. I can call any valid PHP function, for example, a rend to just print the output. OK, let's debug much complex application written in E2 framework, which is an MVC framework. It really doesn't matter which framework you use for, for debugging. The main thing is that you configure your, your VS Code, create breakpoints, and that's it. So this is my application. It is a YouTube clone application. So let's open video controller and create breakpoint right here on line 54. Then I click the run add configuration, choose PHP, and that creates VS Code and a launch JSON file for me. Then I go to the debug tab of VS Code, listen for xdebug and click the play button. This listens for incoming requests. Let's open the browser, reload it, and the debugging has started. On the left side, we have locals, super globals, we have call stack, which if we expand this, we see that it's much bigger stack because it's a real application. We have also breakpoint section, which gives us possibility to define in which case I want xdebug to stop. So if I just tick everything, it will stop on every error, exception, warnings and notices itself. Generally, I don't want it to stop on exceptions and errors. I prefer it to stop on my debug breakpoints. But sometimes it's also very good to stop on on exceptions and errors to see what happens right there. OK, then I step over on this and I see on the left side that data provider was initialized and we can expand the class. We can even mouse over on the variables like this, for example, and we see all the properties of this. If I just continue, I see that the debugger stops on exception. I'm going to untick this everything, restart the debugger and refresh in browser. On line 54, we set the layout to be many, but using debug console, I can change this and set the layout to be auth. And when I mouse over on this, I see that layout is auth. And if I continue in the browser, I don't see this left sidebar because auth layout doesn't have this left sidebar. So this gives, gives me some cool features that I can actually modify my properties in my class instances while I'm debugging something. If simply you don't want to have xdebug enabled anymore, you just stop the debugging and refresh in browser and it works normally. You can leave the breakpoints and later when you start debugging again, your breakpoints might be useful. We can actually apply conditional breakpoints, which is a very cool feature. So if I right click on this breakpoint, I see that I can edit my breakpoint. And right here, I need to write an expression that evaluates to true or false. And if it evaluates to true, my debugger will be stopped on this line. If it's false, simply the breakpoint won't be used. To just show you how this works, I'm going to write if random number is even. Let's pause right here. If not, just continue. Hit the enter. The breakpoint is there, but it's conditional breakpoint. Now, if I reload the browser, it doesn't stop. If I reload a couple of more times, the random number turns out to be even and it stops. Of course, we don't write random numbers in conditional debugging in real projects, but maybe we need to write if the user is guessed, if the user is not authorized, then let's just pause right here. And I see that when I reload in the browser, the debugger starts because I am not actually authorized in the system. If I open login page and login in the system, then I can navigate in my application, I can go to the home page and debugger doesn't stop because I'm actually authorized and conditional breakpoint doesn't satisfy. If you want to remove condition, you just edit, delete everything, hit the enter and that's it. All right, that's it for this video, guys. Hit the like button if you like the video. Hit the subscribe and the bell buttons if you want to see more videos like this. And I will really appreciate if you share this video to help me grow. Thanks for watching and see you in the next time. Cheers.